So in this video, I'm going to cover the player HUD that I've added into the GDXA, GDXR VR template. And by the first thing I want to do is go to the data asset character variables. By this point, you should know where it's located. <laughs> so in here, we've got a UI UX setting or heading. At the bottom, we have HUD movement type, enable player HUD, follow camera update speed, and HUD distance from camera. So follow camera update speed works with the follow player camera HUD movement type. The lower the number, the slower the HUD will try to match the player's view. Higher the number, the faster it'll snap. And then if you want it to immediately snap, you would set that to zero and it'll be permanently locked in place. However, if you're gonna do that, it's much more performant to use locked camera. So when you use locked camera, I have it set up to disable the event tick on the game, on the actual component that runs the HUD. So it's kind of up to you what to do. So if I set this to lock camera, and then we press play. You'll see the yellow text attaches to our camera. No matter where we move it, it follows and stays in front of us. If we set this to follow player camera, save, and then we start, you'll see the hood kind of lags and follows where you're looking. And it also aims to look directly at the camera. So it makes it easier to use. So it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. Lock to camera is more performance ready as it doesn't use a men tick, but a good UI in VR is no UI at all. So keep that in mind. If you need this, it's there if you do. So um, enable player HUD does exactly what it sounds like. It disables or enables it. So you can see it's gone. I can't remember if I already mentioned that. It's been a long day. So enable HUD. And one thing I want to do is cover how you can communicate with it. So the hood itself is part of a component, which is found in the um, components folder in Blueprints. But to begin, I want to show you that BP widget player hood is our master blueprint. So if you want to change your hood and you have a custom VR hood already created and it's got a different name, you want to open up BP widget player hood, select widget, and then make sure it's set inside of our widget class, widget blueprint, player hood master. That'll update it in engine. And then you can go around using it as you would. So the one issue you might want, or you might be struggling with is communicating with this widget class, with it being inside of a blueprint, and then also inside of a component. So in our components folder, we have C player hood. Now if we open this up, you'll see that we've got a couple of things. And the main important thing here is that when you enable the HUD, it spawns that blueprint. So it spawns BP widget player HUD. And then we get the references to it and we use it that way. In the old version of the template, I had it so there was an arrow on the player character and that was used to control distance and everything else. But in this one, I'm using math, kind of like a line trace to get an endpoint from the camera to make it a little bit easier to use. Uh, it actually makes it a lot easier to use, if I'm being honest, removes a lot of com complexity from it. But um, the issue is you still will need to communicate with your UMG in some way. So what I've done is I've set up an example and you can see these inside of the weapons or anything you pick up. So if we go to our weapon and we open it up. Rather than casting to our UMG or anything like that, what we do is we have a blueprint interface which is called BPI UMG updates. And all we need to do from here is get our player character and get component by class. So get player character gets our VR character that's in our scene that contains our component or our HUD. We then get that component. And because there's only one, it'll get our C player HUD. And from here, we can call our player HUD. And that is because inside of our BP widget or inside of our component, sorry. That's what we call it when we spawn it. So player hood, we get that reference. And from there, we can actually get the widget itself. So if you rename uh, this one here inside of your widget blueprint hood to something else, it'll be a different name. But other than that, it's just get your widget and then get user widget object. From there, we can actually push using a blueprint interface through to it. So in this case, we get our HUD. 
we have a data asset that's set up to provide some information to it. And then it actually updates our player. So in our ng player hood, so our hood master in here, we have our graph and we have a interface. So in class settings, we have BPI UMG updates. And then this is what we fire. So we call this from any actor, anything in the world using this little setup. And that'll fire and then push that information through to our hood or anything else. In general, there's a really great way of actually sending information to any UI or UMG without having to cast to it. So keep that in mind. So you just need the reference. And um, we'll delete that so I don't forget. And player hood master. So yeah, so we get our UMG push notifications. We go through, we create a new widget, and then we add that to it. Um, the blueprint interface that you'll need to use is inside of our interfaces folder. And you'll see we've got BPI UMG updates. So any information you want to patch, patch. Any information you want to pass through to a UMG, you can add a function here and then call it the same way uh, from our pistol, like so. So with this one, if there's any questions, make sure to head over to the Discord. I can help you with this one. It's a little bit more confusing, but as it is, it's a lot easier than casting. I have to figure out a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but yeah, so that's it for UMG player hood, I believe. Um, Cover some of the sends. Um, follow camera up this speed, distance from hood. It just makes it closer or further away. Um, I think that's it for this one. So yeah, so if you're interested in downloading this and you want to try it out before everyone else, it's available over on Patreon right now for a fiver. Uh, that's probably going to be changing soon as there's a lot more content I want to add to this, but I'm unable to do it by myself. So need some money to pay other people. But from that, you able to download this, give it a shot. Unreal Engine 5.1. If you've got any, if you need any help, head over to the Discord. I'm in there most days. But yeah, um, yeah. And a final shout out to everyone who's already subbing to this over on Patreon. It's been a big help and started put me, allowed me to put a lot more hours into this. So yeah. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye.